I gave a great audition. I remember being so happy and coming home and saying, I know I got that part. And he calls me up the next day and goes, kid, I really like you, but you know, I'm not gonna give you this part. And I was like, oh, okay. But I really like you and we're gonna work together someday. And I was like, okay, thank you, Mr. Scorsese. And I hang up the phone and like every actor goes, fuck you! <laughs>okay but i really like you and we're gonna work together someday and i was like okay thank you mr scorsese and i hang up the phone and like every actor goes fuck you <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is is that he made good on his promise mm -hmm. so. he must have heard you maybe you left the receiver off <laughs> could have probably heard me you only yeah. lived a couple blocks <laughs> down <laughs> because i mean that's the that's the point i mean it, the, the, it is a, a, a sort of quintessentially new york movie you, or most of you it was where you were you didn't have to Spit travel too far. you didn't have to travel far <laughs> to make the movie oh my god it was a horrible movie to shoot because we shot every day in a different location it was crazy you know making a movie is like a circus so so all the trailers and, and everybody, it was, uh, it was wild. It was very difficult to shoot, very long, very long hours, 16, 17 hours. It was rough. It was not an easy, breezy kind of movie for anyone, for, you know. The only great thing that I remember that Marty kind of insisted on, you want me to call him Mr. Scorsese? You can call him Marty, uh, I'll call him Mr. Scorsese. <laughs> um, was that we shot it a lot in sequence, meaning, we did the uh, 70s, the 80s, and the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, and that's very rare because that cost a lot of money. And, um, and uh, uh, but it was very important because it was, it was such a difficult shoot. Mm -hmm. And did you have to sort of, you know, physically change over the, over the, over the period? Of, sure, yeah. sure. Different hair, different makeup, different clothes, different music. I mean, it was, uh, uh, it was a lot. It was a lot. He took on a lot, but I, I think he did good. Mm, I think he did it right. The, uh, <laughs> what did you do to work on your on your character of Karen? Because obviously there is a real there is a real Karen Hill. Oh yes. Uh, who was pr presumably in, in in the book or uh, oh, yes. Nick Pillage had put in the script and. No, no, he was. They were married, and I believe they had two two children, a boy and a girl. And in the movie, we we kind of just put the two girls. Um, but I mean, sometimes you can meet the real person you play, but not presumably this one. Right, no, I did not have the pleasure of meeting Karen Hill. I would have liked to, but um, she was not interested. And um, where Henry was very interested in hanging out with the boys, you can imagine. Um, Henry also in uh, witness protection was selling drugs and getting arrested every other day. <laughs> so you can imagine what kind of colorful character he really was. Uh, no, Karen, uh, I did not get to meet her. And it wasn't like when we play a role and you play an FBI agent or, or a baker's wife, you know, you could meet people. You know, you can't go and say, hey, are you a mobster? You got a wife? I want to meet her, you know. That didn't happen. So I had to rely very heavily on, on the book and, of course, Nick Pileggi. And towards the end, it was Ed McDonald in the movie the guy who puts them in the witness protection plan was the real guy, the, uh, the real agent who put them in witness protection. 
So I kind of bent his ear a lot to find out, you know, what kind of woman Karen had turned into after these, you know, 20, 30 years and how she ended up, um, you know, having, being forced to go into the witness protection plan with Henry because she didn't want to go and Henry wouldn't go without her. Right. And it, I mean, because she grows into sort of, she, she, she grows a she grows into a um, a dealer <laughs> she dealt drugs for him she was she was naughty mm. she, she started, started off nice. she started off a nice orthodox Jewish girl and you know turned into a very bad girl <laughs> the, I mean, when you when you're doing it the um, the research you were doing because the st what's so fantastic about the film as well there's the music there's the styling as well and there's that first voiceover where she goes all the all the women they look beat up and they had the hair and that's you know we, we get taken into this world where you know the rollers and the makeup are, are crucial to the identity of these of these people where did you where did where well, all that I, advice come from I mean the audience is me at that point I think you know I, I think she'd never seen that before um, it was, they're crazy. <laughs> they, they, that's how they dealt with, you know, their husbands going to jail, their children going to jail, who's getting murdered, who, it was crazy. That was their life. And did you get, I mean, as you say, you can't meet Karen Hill, but did you get close to that kind of, that kind of life? Or was that, did you leave that up to Nick Pillage's script and, and Martin, Martin Scorsese's direction to kind of do that for you? Or were there, were there visits to the set, shady characters? No, no. no. None of that? No. It was, it was Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't I mean, I think, I think Henry and, and Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci and um, uh, Ray Liotta met Henry or talked to Henry several times on the phone. I mean, maybe Henry, you know, came to their trailer or something like that, Marty's trailer. But, um, yeah, I was not part of that. Mm. Tell me about Ray, Ray Liotta as well, because the two of you have a, obviously this crucial relationship in, in the movie, and he's such a crucial kind of narrator of, of this movie. Yes. Did you know him already? Did, uh, how was your relationship with Ray? Um, I had met Ray. Uh, Marty had asked me to come up for a drink in his apartment and um, w to talk about the, the book at the time. I'm not sure I had the script yet, but talk about the book. And as I walked in, Ray was there. So I was like, okay, I guess he got the pot. <laughs> and, um, and that was it, that was my audition, was just meeting them and talking to them and, and I walked out and that was it. What sort, of, what sort of performer is he? I mean, he looks kind of, you know, live wire throughout. I mean, it's a hell oh, of a performance. Oh, he's live wired, all right. <laughs> Um, he's a great guy. He's a very, very concentrated actor. He was so happy to do this movie. He watched everyone on this set, from the gaffer to the, to, to the DP. He wanted to see and learn as much and absorb as much as he could uh, to learn about filmmaking. And um, he was great, Ray. I mean, he was really my rock. Mm -hmm. And he, he was, was, he was leading rock. you through it. Oh, yeah. He would push me into my light. and <laughs> uh, Yeah, it was fun. He was, uh, he was very committed, and I, I, love, I loved him for that. Mm -hmm. And when we talked to, at the beginning about the, the Copacabana shot. Can you, can you talk us through it? I mean, obviously, that's a, it, it's a bit of choreography that's required to do that shot. And you, 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 come, you come through the, to, the, to the entrance hall, then you turn right, and then you down and through the kitchen. Right. How, how long do you have to work on a shot like that? And was it well, Michael the, Bauhaus was the, the director of photography? He was the director of photography, but it's, Mc, what's his name? Larry McConkie. Ma, Larry? McConkie. McConkie, who was the steady cam operator. And it was very um, adventurous for Marty and all of them to do it. But what, this is a perfect example of what kind of actor Ray is. Ray stayed with, uh, with Larry to do, to set the shot up so Ray would know where to go, where to stop, where to turn. And, uh, you know, I just danced along with him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the, per it's the, the timing of it is perfect because it, 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 it suits, as we mentioned, the, 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 the song, The Crystals. Did, it, would, did, did they have the music on the set? Did, they, did you know what song it was going to be to? Hmm. I don't think so. Mm. 
Because, I mean, this, the music is so... 25 years ago. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can't remember everything. It's fresh. They've just seen it. <laughs> but, but the music is so key, because you say it takes us through the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. You know, each, each little music cue is kind of pushes the action forward. So what I understand is Marty already knew exactly what music he was going to use for every scene and every cut. Wow, because there, there's a there's a lot. I mean, oh, I mean there's, there's there's almost not a, a scene without it's it. It's a catalog. <laughs> yeah, and it is like putting on an album. This this yeah. this this, this film. I agree. It's a favorite favorite. Do, do you have a do you have a, a favorite scene that you got to do in there? I mean, there's there are so many, but do you have a favorite one either that you were For in or me not? Yet? Or 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 of the movie. Well, so maybe there's one that you're not in that, that you prefer. My favorite line, okay. <laughs> Is when Joe Penn, when they go back to dig up the body, <laughs> and um, and Ray is throwing his brains up because it's like it's horrific. I mean, I can't even conceive of it. <laughs> Joe Pesci goes, "I found a wing. <laughs> I got a wing, Henry." <laughs> I, you know, I had just seen the movie not too long ago in Los Angeles, and I forgot how funny this movie, it's crazy, it's funny, mm. it's very violent, my God, but it's hysterical. The, the, I mean, what, what were they, I mean, what were they like as a, as a, as a threesome? Now, we, we did mention Ray and his live wire, well, um, how were they here, Robert De Niro, how was Joe Pesci, what, I mean, what's he? Listen, they, they, they work together again, you know, Joe and Robert have made many movies together. So they, you know, they knew, they, well, Robert's known Joe Pesci for forever when he, if I'm not mistaken, when he was a lounge singer. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't seen Jersey Boys, Joe Pesci was, kind of found them, uh, Frankie Valli and, and the boys. So, um, but Joe was a lounge singer and I think somehow, uh, they they met and they were friends, you know, very, you know. Mm -hmm. And you would say that Joe Pesci has a, he, he, he's something to do with the Jersey Boys, not just the fact that he's part of the, the, the musical. Oh, I think, you know, uh, I think when they made the script and everything, yeah, Joe was a big part of making that happen, the movie and, and the Broadway show and, and here, I saw it. I took the red bus today, <laughs> I did two and a half hours, froze my ass off. I know all about London. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I would, what I would like to do is, is a good fellas tour of, of, of New York, New Jersey. So you would mention how many different locations you were going to. No New Jersey, Queens. Was it Queens, all... Long Island. And that's where, so Karen's house was? Well, Karen, Karen, you mean the real the 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 the, the pet where, where where he comes and you know, and, and hits your hits your, your the, the the Jewish boyfriend on, in the face with a gun. Where's I, that? I don't know where that was. I don't remember. Yeah. And then the, and the beach. There's the beach club as well. Yes. Well, that's still there. That's a that's a landmark in. But that's in Queens. Right. And then the, and then. You know, the, the sets. I don't know. Is it, is it was it was it sets or no? Most of it's... Very, no sets. Everything was on location. That's why it was so difficult. So you had to you had to kind of move the whole lot. The whole. Move. It's a circus. You're moving. Right. You know, twenty trucks, hair, makeup, wardrobe, camera, uh, lights. I mean, it's crazy. Because the the scene All where our you, trailers. The scene where you're sent down the the tunnel, well, the, down the down the street? down the block, the street by by Robert De Niro, and he says, "Go down there." And, that still that still scares me, you know. Every time I see it, even though I know you're not going to go, but <laughs> it's the, the tension of that scene. Do, where's well, that? Do you remember that? Oh, I think that was somewhere in Queens too. Yeah, somewhere in Queens. Still dangerous. For you. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just saying. <laughs> You took oh. the London bus, you know, you, 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 the brave stuff. The, the, um, the, the, the film became, you know, sort of, it was very, people said it was extremely violent, oh. you know, kind of, it's, it still is violent. Oh. But I think at the time it was very, very shocking, language-wise, violence-wise. Did it have, I know your daughters are in the movie when they were little, you know, yes. little kids. 
Yes, well, we worked like dogs on this movie. We, I was on the set from, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning until 7, 8.30 at night, and I hadn't seen them. I was like, I do have children somewhere. Where are they? And Marty was trying to find two kids to play the children. And I said, well, could you use my kids so I could see them? <laughs> and he said, yeah, sure, bring them in. And I said, fine. So he used my kids. And Stella got a lot of, a lot of uh, play in the movie, which is cute, makes us, make, tickles me. You know, now she's 31, uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, so she's, she, she's your daughter in, in she's, the... Yeah, she's the one when Ray and I are fighting. And um, I, I'm telling you, I'm surprised that they uh, all didn't need psychiatric help after this. <laughs> but um, she's the one, uh, well, in the prison scene with the, uh, with the blocks when Ray and I are screaming at each other. And she's also in the scene when Ray and I scream at each other. and. Um, uh, I throw the lamp, and uh, and it was so funny because she knew Ray, and of course she, she knows her mother, and so when we would start to, you know, she would see we were all friends and loving and caring and sweet, and then we would go into these roles and be like two animals at each other, and Stella would be like, what is going on? And I would say, you know what, we're only play acting. Mm -hmm. We're only play acting, and we would hug and kiss her and hold her after every take. <laughs> and then we say, okay, you ready to yell at each other? Right? Yeah, yeah, we're ready to yell. Stella, we're going to yell. <laughs> She'd be like, okay. <laughs> All right, Ma. That was funny. Yeah, it's a fair, the, those, um, the energy that you have, we, I talked about Ray's live wire, but you had to kind of match him, I suppose, and kind of be. Shit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't going to go up on me. Did you, because this, you know, you've done, you've done some roles before. You, as you say, you auditioned for Martin Scorsese before, but you, to, to be an actress in, with a, in a Martin Scorsese film, was that, was that something you were always aiming for in your career? Did this come along at the right point for you? Well, honestly, I think every actor and actress want to be in a Martin Scorsese movie. Let's just call a spade a spade, uh, you know. I would like to be in, you know, a Spielberg movie. It's the same category uh, of, of director that every actor kind of aspires to. Um, and, uh, you know, I was lucky that day. I, I always say that. I've been very lucky in my career. Mm -hmm. But you weren't an actress to, to start with. It wasn't the, the way, where you began your career. You, you were you always, always aiming towards it. Did you did you fall into it? Did you did it did it come upon you, or did you kind of kind of realize that that's where your your talents lay? Hmm. Um. Well, I used to model. I was a model for many many years, and when I came back to the states, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, and um, I worked on production for a while. I moved Meryl Streep's shit around. <laughs> um. <laughs> Stuff, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Good. And um, and then I was making a dollar fifty and couldn't even pay the babysitter with the money I was making. I said, yeah, this isn't gonna work out for me. And um, I started to uh, sit at the actor studio, and I sat there for about a year every Tuesday and Friday, and I just sat there and I kept my mouth shut. And, um, and I started to go to acting class at Stella Adler. And one day I turned around and I said, you know, I think I could do this. Mm. So my, uh, my partner at the time, Harvey Keitel, said, go do it. <laughs> go, go, go. And then I auditioned for Ridley Scott and got the movie. <laughs> Someone to watch over me. Mm. With Mimi Rogers. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Tom Berenger. Mm. I always have very good looking uh, men. <laughs> They're always better looking than me. I never understood that. Not tonight, obviously. <laughs> no, that's not <laughs> true. <laughs> um, 